right, it's time for the news. Anyone leave a box here? What's this? What's it doing here? Hmm, wonder what's inside. Support! No! Ollie said don't open the box. Okay. Okay. We won't open the box. That's fine. We won't open the box. I'm just gonna... I'll move it... I'll, I'll move it over here. It's fine. I'm Pete Quinnell, welcome to the Russell Talk News. Today's top story is that WWE staff are shocked by a recent Vince McMahon decision. I personally have stopped being shocked by Vince, so there's no bottom to this pit of expectations that I have. While many of the WWE talent themselves seem to be rather dismayed by Vince's return, last minute creative changes, and presumably his moustache, it seems that the same may apply for the WWE employees at WWE HQ, especially the moustache bit. Earlier this week, a Nick Khan email leaked in which he was informing WWE employees that the company would be returning to full office hours starting Monday, May 1st. Since the pandemic, much like many other workplaces, WWE would employ more flexible working conditions, which, peeling back the curtain, we have here too. Unless we're needed to record something, most of us here work from home Mondays and Fridays. Unless you're Tempest. Then you're in every Saturday. <laughs> Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics would reveal later that the date had been changed to May 8th. However, he would also reveal the popularity of the flexible work conditions via a prior internal employee survey. And now, according to Dave Meltzer in the Wrestling Observer newsletter, the change not only shocked WWE staff, but many are of the belief that it was a Vince decision, which makes sense because it was short notice, and that's that's kind of what Vince does. Last night saw the first night of the WWE Draft in 2023 on SmackDown, which Tempest will have a review of here shortly, where there were some very interesting picks. Bianca Belair was drafted to SmackDown with her Raw Women's title, meaning we're most likely getting yet another belt swap segment with Rhea Ripley. Which one of them's gonna drop it on the floor and anger the other first? But perhaps most interestingly, Roman Reigns was kept on SmackDown, while Cody Rhodes was kept on Raw. And while the brand split meant essentially nothing in the lead to WrestleMania 39, with Cody, Rhea, KO, Sami, The and the unending existential dread of the end of humanity freely jumping between brands. It seems with the draft, they're trying to re-establish the brands to be a bit more exclusive. So no Cody rematch? Well, that may not be the case. While many fans still want Cody to finish the story against Roman Reigns and not take the consolation prize of the new World Heavyweight title, even with them now being on different brands, it still might be going ahead. Just next year though. According to WrestleVotes via Give Me Sport, a Cody vs. Reigns rematch is very much on the table to close WrestleMania 40 next year. Which means by Mania next year, the brand exclusivity already won't be a thing. Sweet. Unless we get another superstar shakeup or another draft or a wildcard or they just don't care. Any of the above. And finally for today's news, it was reported earlier this week that Naomi, real name Trinity Fatu, was bound for glory in Impact Wrestling. See, I said... I said the name of the thing in the company. This has now been confirmed with pictures and videos coming out from the set of Impact tapings last night, which show Naomi, now going by just Trinity, appearing at the tapings. A story nearly a year in the making, good for her. I really hope she does well over there. And now over to Tempest for his review of SmackDown and also a one minute one take of Rampage, where he'll attempt to recount what happened on AEW Rampage last night in one minute. And in one take! Isn't that right, Tempest? You all wanted your stupid Rampage review back, <laughs> and now you got it! It's <laughs> LIW4 sometimes! Sometimes! Yeah! Woo! Don't miss the most controversial book of the year as WrestleTalk presents The New War, WWE versus AEW. Available now in print and ebook at WrestleShop.com. Now it's time for the one minute, one take AEW Rampage review, start the clock. Ricky Starks and Sean Spears lost to the Kiss Kiss Bang Bang Gang as Jay White hit Spears with the Blade Runner. And I think now would be a perfectly adequate time to talk about whether Ricky Starks actually benefited from that rivalry with Chris Jericho, but perhaps another time because I only got one minute. Keith Lee and Dustin Rhodes made their TV debut as a team and beat two jobbers before being briefly confronted by Swerve with no physicality. And I must remind you all that this man started this rivalry like four to five months ago. Let's hurry it up. Matt Hardy says he feels broken by what happened to Isaiah Cassidy. Brother Nero intensifies. Anna JAS tapped out Ashley D'Ambois with the Queen Slayer before brawling after the match with Julia Hart. The acclaimed dropped some bars and then beat three jobbers. The outcasts have shirts with Britt Baker's black eye on them, and I need the teleprompter to go a little bit faster than it's going right now, and I'm on a time limit! I'm on a time limit, Pete! Let's go! 
no! Hurry it up! And then Jay Lethal beat Cash Wheeler in the main event because even as That's AEW nice. Tag Team Champions, it's not my fault! FTR can't buy win these days. Bad week for the top guys. <laughs> I was doing fine! <laughs> it's the prompter's fault, not Tempest. <sighs> now, it's time for SmackDown. Pete, where's my podium? You want a podium? I said I wanted a podium. It's a, w it's a WWE draft. I got to read out the, the picks like I'm Roger Goodell. I, I don't know who that is. F***ing Brits, man. This is, this is Tempest. This is my review of SmackDown in under five minutes. Start the clock again. Triple H comes out to make the first set of draft picks, which mostly amounts to things staying the same. With the first pick, SmackDown selects Roman Reigns, Paul Heyman, and Solo Sokoa, who stay where they are. With the second pick, Raw selects Cody Rhodes, who stays where he is. With the third pick, SmackDown selects the Raw Women's Champion, Bianca Belair, who actually does change brands. And with the fourth pick, Raw selects Becky Lynch, who stays where she is. I really don't care for this format of WWE draft where everyone has to be drafted even though it means many of those on the roster stay put. It just feels like a waste of time. Bianca Belair moving to SmackDown is very interesting at least. Either she actually loses to EO Sky at Backlash or we're about to see yet another WWE title swap meet. I can't handle another one, Pete. It's, it's so dumb. Hmm. Sos came out for their usual promo saying they would win back the WWE tag titles for Roman Reigns even though Roman Reigns hasn't been in communication with them since WrestleMania. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn interrupted and Sami asked why they are dedicating a match to a guy who won't even answer their calls and the Usos say Kevin Owens is just going to turn on Sami and Kevin is tired of hearing it. Butch then took on LA Knight in another fun match with LA Knight picking up the win. What is this witchcraft? There were some fun spots in this one with Knight getting to the ropes to break up a Kimura from Butch but turning it into a slingshot, a nice touch. Knight hit a picture perfect superplex and eventually got the win with the BFT. Finally, a win on SmackDown for LA Knight. Yeah! Pete, you gotta do the yeah. Yeah! I miss that. Paul Heyman is giving an impassioned pep talk to the Usos backstage, but as he's telling them that they must win tonight, he turns to Solo to let him know that if the Usos fail, they gotta get got. We then had the next round of picks made by Michael P.S. Look at my suits, Hayes, representing SmackDown, and Rob Van Dam representing Raw. Here the picks were a bit more interesting, as with the fifth pick, SmackDown selected the Street Profits, who move shows, then with the sixth pick, Raw selected my will to live. I mean, they drafted Walter and the rest of Imperium. <sighs> they drafted SmackDown Saving Grace away. What am, what am I gonna review now? They drafted Edge though. What? They drafted Edge. <sighs> Never mind, it's all good! SmackDown selects with the 7th pick, the Rated R Superstar. And then with the 8th pick, Rob Van Dam announces that Riddle is going slash staying on Raw. The Street Profits in their blue Super Smash Brothers variant come out and say that nothing has changed for them besides the day they work on because they want the smoke. Should have stayed with Riddle then. They are greeted by Braun Strowman and Ricochet at... change them because they weren't blue. Blue. blue blue smackdown blue i thought they were blue they were purple that's blue they are greeted by braun Strowman and ricochet and the lwo for a triple threat tag match where the newly drafted duo got a big win braun and ricochet played off their miscommunication from last week as ricochet was hesitant about braun yeeting him over the top rope which was a cute spot i like that a lot loads of dives from all the high flyers before montez ford pinned ricochet with the frog splash to end a very fun match the next set of picks were made by jbl boo representing smackdown and teddy long representing raw Teddy representing Raw. Surely that's backwards. Yeah, famous Raw general manager, Teddy Long. These were some more interesting draft picks as SmackDown took Bobby Lashley and the OC, which still includes Mia Michin Yim for some reason, but yay, AJ Styles back on SmackDown, the house that AJ Styles built, yay. The face that runs the place, the champ that runs the camp. 
He had probably more. Well, Raw takes Drew McIntyre and The Miz. Goodbye, Drew. We shall miss you. Zelina Vega came out for her match against Sonya Deville, a match she actually won, marking her first singles win since December of 2021. There wasn't a lot to this match. It was short and Zelina won with a roll-up. Considering you probably want to make Zelina look as credible as possible going into her match with Rhea Bloody Ripley, I don't know why Zelina's win here wasn't a little bit more decisive. Just eking out a roll-up win over Sonya Deville, who can't buy a singles win either, doesn't quite quite fill me with confidence for Zelina's match at Backlash. After the match, Rhea attacked Zelina and Sonya, but as she went for the Riptide, Zelina turned it into a DDT. Backstage after the match, Zelina gets a pep talk from Rey Mysterio and Santos Escobar, and then we have AJ Styles and company coming out to the ring. They are immediately interrupted by the Viking Raiders, who are immediately demolished. Good luck taking them as a threat anytime soon. AJ Styles hit the phenomenal forum, so hopefully he's almost ready to come back. Also, the main event of the first ever Ring of Honor show I went to had all five of these men in the the main event. I just thought that was neat. Road Dog then comes out to make the next set of picks for Raw. Boo. And Shawn Michaels comes out to make the next set of picks for SmackDown. But he's always... He's always been a raw guy. What do you, whatever. SmackDown selects damage control, which means they're almost certainly doing another title belt switchy switchy. Then Raw selects Shinsuke Nakamura. Then with the only NXT call-ups of the night, SmackDown selects Isla Dawn and Alba Fire. And Raw selects Indy Hartwell. I tell you, these are not at all the NXT folk who I would have drafted first, but like, good for them, I suppose. Alba Fire and Isla Dawn get interviewed and challenged by Caden Carter and Katana Chance for the NXT women's tag titles, and then Shinsuke Nakamura is about to be interviewed about moving to Raw, but he is immediately attacked by Karrion Cross. Solo Sokoa gets held back backstage because he is maybe going to have to kill his brothers later on, and then they let us know that stars from Raw and SmackDown will battle it out to become World Heavyweight Champion, and I'm sorry, but why are SmackDown stars battling it out to become champion of Raw? Isn't that the whole point of the belt? Isn't that the point of the draft? To like separate the brands? Christ almighty, are we sure? Well, I guess we're not sure Vince isn't running the show. <laughs> we then got our main event between the Usos and Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, and we can all breathe easy because Kevin and Sami did indeed retain their titles. Paul Heyman got a call halfway through the match to tell Solo that this was his night, and then Solo made his way to ringside only to be run off by Matt Riddle. There were loads of super kicks and near falls and such in this match, but finally KO hit the stunner and Sammy hit the haluva kick on Jimmy for the win. And that's your first night of the WWE draft. Overall, there were some moves that made me excited for the future. Others that made me sad. Just leave the memories alone, Walter. Others that made no difference whatsoever. And some fun matches. All in all, a good show, I would say. Three, three out of five, four out of five, it doesn't matter. LA night one, let's say it's a four out of five. Yeah! Yeah! And that just about wraps things up from me. Make sure, of course, that you check out the latest edition of Adam's Fantasy Booking over on Parts of Unknown, where he fantasy books Brock Lesnar's retirement. And as well, make sure you check out the latest edition of Cutscene from Luke Owen entitled, Here's Why Sonic the Hedgehog Didn't Have a Movie in the 1990s. Here's a clip of that right now. Do you ever wonder why at the height of his popularity in the 90s, Sega never made a movie of Sonic the Hedgehog? Despite a few teething issues, uh... Sonic the Hedgehog finally ran full speed onto the big screen in 2020. Bring